Hello, Ashley. Hello, Taryn. Um, it's almost Christmas. It is almost. So, thank God. What? Thank God. Oh, thank God. And and your birthday. I let's know. Let's talk about it later. This is my section. No. Um, let's talk about it now. So for today's fact or fiction with Taryn, um, does I have Ashley a fact. turn thirty two or does she turn twenty four? Shush your butt. Okay. okay. Get your together. Did you know that before Coca Cola? Use Santa's image for advertising. Ooh. Santa used to be portrayed as spooky more than jolly, but in 1931, the beverage company hired an, I can't say his name, an illustrator, and they made him really jolly looking. And now, he's Santa. That's like our vision of Santa is very like jolly looking. And I'm going to show you the advertisement. Oh. Like, he's so jolly I'm and happy looking. Yeah, it's the rosy cheeks, for sure. Whereas before, remember, it was like Father Christmas. He was like all like skinny yeah. with like a long beard. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. So Coca-Cola changes lives. Coca-Cola changed everyone's life. Coca-Cola invented Santa. <laughs> Essentially, yes. What I'm hearing <laughs> is Coca-Cola. The message Santa. should be taken away. Thank you, Coca-Cola, yeah. for the Santa we Thank all you. know and love and grew up with. Give me a ho, 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 ho. <laughs> No, like Cena. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Wealthfront. After answering just a couple questions, Wealthfront will build you a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds in minutes. You can also build your own portfolio with clean energy funds, crypto trust, tech, and hundreds of other investments. Wealthfront even offers a socially responsible portfolio, a mix of funds built around human rights, climate change, sustainability, and diversity. Best of all, Wealthfront is totally automated. They do all the trading, all the rebalancing, and they even help Help you lower your tax bill while you invest. And honestly, the thing that got me, and I was like, um, okay, sign me up. They manage your first five thousand dollars completely for free and for life. To start building your wealth and get your first five thousand managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com/advice. That's w-e-a-l-t-h-f-r-o-n-t.com/advice to start building your wealth. That's wealthfront.com/advice and get started today. So if you're listening to this podcast, that means you know me pretty well and you know that um, I've been described as lazy and you know, that also comes into play with getting ready in the morning. I am always looking for ways to find makeup products that not only work, but are fast and easy to apply. And that is why I am a big fan of Luminous and their new Breeze Cordless Airbrush System. It's a completely touchless way to put on foundation fast and easy. No sponges, brushes, or fingers. It just goes on with air and it is made for everyday application in just minutes. With Luminous, you get three times more coverage with 10 times less makeup. I don't know about you guys, but I get super phased by cakey feeling of foundation, but I do want coverage because my skin tones uneven. So this is literally like the best of both worlds. They're designed to work with all skin types and skin tones and they're clean and water-based foundation quickly and easily covers fine lines and wrinkles, conceals imperfection, and applies flawlessly in seconds. And y'all, not only is it foundation, but it combines anti-aging serum, primer, concealer, and foundation. That means there's no need to buy dozens of different makeup products anymore. All you need is Luminous. And it's clean and hypoallergenic. Like literally, like what more do you need to know? I feel like I've already said everything. But if you're not convinced, also Luminous comes in 18 shades, so they've got a color for every skin type. It's an 18 hour wear, water-based, cruelty-free, made in the US. And if this still isn't enough and you're not taking my word for it, Cosmopolitan raves that Luminous is their pick for best overall airbrush system, and it has over 50,000 five-star reviews. And they're so confident you'll love their product that they offer a 100% shade match guarantee. Whether you're updating your beauty routine because you're heading back to the office or just looking for a better, faster way to put on your foundation, we've got good news. Right now, if you go to breezeairbrush.com slash advice, you'll receive 50% off their airbrush makeup system plus free shipping. And because you're a listener, there is a special free gift included just for you. That's 50% off plus free shipping when you go to breezeairbrush.com slash advice. Don't forget, you get 
get 30 days to experience airbrush in your own home or send it back for a full refund. Today's episode is brought to you by First Leaf. First Leaf winemakers sample 10,000 wines a year across five continents and 12 countries and select only the best bottles for the club. First Leaf believes wine is personal. They create a custom wine print for each member and maps their vast portfolio of wines to each person's unique taste preferences once you take their five minute quiz. The more wines you rate, the more each shipment is personalized to your taste. And as always, one thing me and Ash are always huge fans of, there's no contracts or cancellation fees. And if you're not happy with the wine you receive, First Leaf will give you a credit towards your next shipment for a risk-free way to explore an endless array of world-class wine. We love opening our packages every month and just seeing different types of bottles and wines and just getting to explore without having to go to the store and be stressed out. Celebrate your special first and the moments that count with First Leaf, the wine club designed to help you discover new wines you'll love, personalized to your taste and delivered to your door. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 with free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash advice. That's tryfirstleaf.com slash advice for six bottles of wine for $29.95 with free shipping. Here's a toast to first. May you enjoy them with the people you love from the first sip to the last. Try firstleaf.com slash advice. Okay, now you can talk about your birthday if you want. <laughs> it's my birthday. and no, I'm just kidding. My birthday is going around the corner and I'm very excited about it. Um, this is, I have met a handful of people that have uh, Christmas birthdays. There's not a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually never met anyone with my birthday. I've heard Always, of like, people. The Christmas Eve, I feel like I've heard, I've heard of more. I've met people that have Christmas Eve birthdays. Um, but I have heard of people being like, oh, my cousin's born on Christmas. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll be like, oh, th- I understand. Like, it's it's hard. Must be hard and yeah. I'm like, it's Double the gifts. worst. Um, but- Is that the worst part? the gifts the double gifting like it's christmas and birthday that was or... the worst part when i was like 12 i hate got it. it got it yeah. or is it like I, you don't feel like it's as like big of a deal now that i'm older i don't care about the presents obviously it's it's more about like oh there's really no time in the month to actually throw myself a birthday party yeah and every birthday party or dinner i've ever tried to do like there's always like a handful of people that can't make it yeah because it's the holidays so the best possible situation is like a half birthday or throwing a party in november or january yeah um but yeah if you know any (laughs) christmas babies Give, give, them a, a hug. give them a hug. Give them give an them extra present. Love. Give them a drink. Do yeah. something for them. Yeah. Um. Because it's not always it's not always amazing, but it is nice because everyone always remembers your birthday. Oh yeah, like like people so that I haven't easy. talked to since like elementary school will text me. Yeah. Or or like DM or something and be like, Hey, Boy. happy birthday! And When's mine? July twentieth. <laughs> my brain <July>. almost. <laughs> My brain almost She's went like, to true. mush and I Testing. panicked for a second. I was like, June You were You weren't a good tester in school, huh? No. I'm did you, bad. Did you get like panicky? Oh, I had panic attacks. Yeah, yeah, I actually I like, had I to have- I feel like I saw that. I had to have someone like coach me through how to calmly breathe during tests. Yeah. Because I had a hard I time. I think people like talk about- there's. There are people who just can't take tests. Test anxiety. It's unfair for that to be like the measurement. What are we're just talking about? I had a really cool. There was a really cool program at the school that I went to. I had a really hard time with math, and I always did. Um, In geometry class, there was an option for me specifically because everyone knew that I had struggled with school period, let alone math, where I could take the test verbally. Oh, and I didn't look at the test yeah like I would have my notepad and my teacher would stand at the front with the exam and he would verbally give me like the ABC whatever and I would yeah you know for for the test anyways and I would tell him the answer and I did great in that class isn't that weird so I wonder if you so have you ever heard of like auditory processing yeah in high school <laughs> Do during you think that program that, that was like partly because I've I've had kids that we've like it's the if they hear it or wait is that opposite like hearing something versus like seeing it it just it like ignites something different in their brain you know I don't I never really studied too much 
of it, but I that's what I that's what honestly that's how I passed. <laughs> that's <laughs> the so only cool. reason I passed. Your teacher but, just did that for yeah. you? Yeah. That, what a good teacher. And what was weird is the elementary school that I went to um, was not ele- elementary school slash middle school that I went to was really not was really behind. Okay. With edu- by the time I got to high school, I was behind on everything. Oof. And what was weird was he did this for a handful of people. Everyone in this group was from the elementary school that I went to. Interesting. Yeah. Like we were all like we all came from the same middle school, the same elementary yeah. school. We were all in the same program where he had to verbally give us our exams. That's crazy. Isn't that wild? That's nuts. I know. Good for him though. He was great. Love that. What yeah. are we hi, welcome to our podcast. Hi. <laughs> what do we do on this podcast? We're just figuring out why Ashley still doesn't know her times tables. We talk about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys just join along. Um Freaking Christmas is Christmas coming. Is, Christmas is around the corner. I It is the time of year where I thrive. Mm-hmm. Thrive during this time of year. Yeah. Um, minus, you know, Vlogmas, which... We are in the middle. Knee deep. Middle. So pray for Actually, all of us. T- towards the end. Towards the yeah, end. Yeah. But still in the thick of it of Vlogmas. As you guys already know, me, Alicia, and Taryn spend all of December filming and editing daily videos Mm -hmm. daily content that goes up on our channels and it's a lot Mm -hmm. and we're a little crazy we're going a little crazy right now but we're getting through it and that's all that matters um i am richer (laughs) but i have back problems and um i got a massage one time after vlogmas and they were like what do you do because my muscles in my right like (laughs) Your tendon arm. and your right arm. We're like bulging. And she's like, what do you do for she's a living? She's like, I lift. I was like, I edit for YouTubers. Bulk lifter. Bulk lifting. Just with my fingers. <laughs> Just your fingers. <laughs> uh, present yeah. wrapping is going strong huh? for me. Present wrapping oh, okay. is going strong for me. Yeah, yeah. Really stoked on that. Um, other than that, still trying to figure out some last minute present ideas. But it's, we're do getting there. you know what there. you're getting me? Uh, I don't want to give anything away. Okay. Actually, well, I haven't ordered it yet. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, cool. Well, would love to quickly just give a little shout out. Okay. Uh, I know it's the holidays, but you guys still have to do your part in this podcast. Okay. Oh, it's wow. not just me and Taryn. It's you guys too, as the listeners and as our writers. <laughs> Yeah, that write our content. As our content givers. <laughs> so um, I know, I know it's a busy season, but if you are going through anything, we'll have a story you've been wanting to share, mm-hmm. um, or have a friend that experienced something like that you feel comfortable sharing. Like, take the moment to send us an email, give us all the details. We need yeah. more content and yeah. stories, and we wouldn't be here without you guys. So, do your part. And dig deep, guys. Yeah. Dig deep. Let's like, get emotional here. D- like, Let's get not messy. just about your love lives. Like, we want to know everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> All the things. I want to know everything about everyone. Like, I am that person that just asks what some might think is inappropriate questions, but because mm. I genuinely it just want to know. how well you know the person. That's how I was with you in the beginning of our friendship. I'd be like, have you ever this? Do you this? What yeah. do you really think about this? Yeah. What have you struggled with? I'd be like, uh, mm, great But that's question. why we got so close, because Ashley was like, no, no, no. And I was yeah. like, yes, yes, yes. Well, I, <laughs> Ashley was like, no, no, no. And Taryn showed up with a freaking chainsaw and just broke down the- Yeah, I did. I did. Broke down the walls. Forced my way in. <laughs> also- <laughs> Uh, remember when you completely interrupted me and took away my tearing it up because you had a tearing it up? No, I do not recall. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is the tearing up I was going to read. Yeah. Welcome to the tearing it up segment. Welcome. That was my segue. A little bit of sass. A little, little bit, bit of, of sass. bitterness. And it's just behind that. the wild vlogmas has gotten into my yeah. head. <laughs> Uh, this one is titled, or for those of you that don't know, the tearing it up segment is embarrassing stories only. Funny stories only. Yeah. Um, this one is titled WTF is in my ear plus a dad joke. WTF in my ear? Oh no. Mm-hmm. Turn it up. I WTF this is in night, my ear. This like f- big fear about ears. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you after because what if it's the same thing and then mm-hmm. I just like ruined your story? You know, yeah. go ahead. Please don't. Hey ladies, <laughs> I have another turn it up for you. I'm the one who submitted the story about the kid who got his hair caught in the fan. <laughs> if you read <sighs> both my stories, I will be thrilled. This is definitely one of those moments that made me think, what in the world just happened? Yep. 
In the summer of 2012, I had just gotten off the evening shift at my part-time job. It was dark outside, so I pulled into my parents' driveway. The porch lights were on. And the porch lights were on. As I walked from my car to the house, I hear buzzing near my ear. I started to freak out a little bit and was swatting frantically around my head with my hands. In the panic of swatting away at whatever was near me, I cut my face with my fingernail. And I started to bleed. Straight chaos. And then, all of the sudden, I hear something buzzing inside inside inside. my head. Oh, God. Sweet Jesus. Absolutely not. Naturally, I start smacking my head in an attempt to thrust it out. At this point, I'm developing a headache from all of the whiplash, and I start screaming and crying as the flapping in my head continues. Then my dad runs out, worried (laughs) that I was in trouble, which I was. He keeps trying to help, but every time I hear the flapping and buzzing in my ear, I scream, run in place, wiggle my hands, and cry a lot. My dad finally gets me inside and figures that whatever is in my ear, we should drown out. So he lays me (laughs) on the kitchen counter with my head on the counter and starts pouring liquid. I don't remember what it was. She goes, but that's not important because there's a bug in my ear. Thankfully, the flapping slowly stops. I start to use cotton swabs to absorb the liquid, but no sign of the creature. For the next few days, nothing. WTF is in my ear. Over the following months, each time I used a cotton swab on my ears, I would get tiny bits of bug legs or bug wings. Ew, I know you're grossed out, but it had to have been a year later when I finally got the majority of some kind of bug body out of my ear. What? A year? To this day, I still don't know what kind of bug it was. I'm thinking some kind of mosquito. I don't know. but But because of this incident, I freak out anytime I hear buzzing from bees, wasps, flies, or pretty much anything else. My friends call me ridiculous for my behavior until I tell them this story. Then they get it. Thanks for reading. And here is my unsolicited advice. Plug your ears when you're outside in the dark during the summer near lights. (laughs) That's what I do now. Amazing. I hate that so much. I had a cousin who had a lake house one summer and she like... It's a lake house, you know, like you're swimming in like dirty lake water and yeah, you're like lake in the water grass. Is yeah, disgusting. Apparently, there was some kind of beetle in her hair, and she went to take a shower, and the beetle crawled into her ear. No, and she said it. Apparently, it hurt like really, yeah. really bad, and she had to go to the hospital and get it taken out. Yeah. So I have this fear because one of my coworkers' daughters was sleeping and woke up to excruciating pain inside her ear. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm I, pretty sure it was tea tree oil on a cotton ball. It pulls but, them out. Yeah, so she put that on her ear because she called her mom freaking out and her mom was like, do this. So puts it on her ear. This bug came out. And so my coworker brought the picture the next day and we were like looking up and we're pretty sure it was a termite. So it was literally like burrowing into her like ear. <gasps> yeah. Oh my so God. So there's time still to this day where I'll <sighs> start falling asleep. It pops in my head, and I'm like, my ears are exposed, and I'll like put a Bugs blanket. Bugs are disgusting. Over. Bugs are disgusting. That's so scary. You want to hear another one? <laughs> I no. had a friend. I had a friend um, in like seventh and eighth grade, and she always went. This is like something that's very popular in Southern California, especially if you live more towards the desert. People love to go like to the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like and get like houses and like. Uh, yeah. Or boats and like stay there for like a full week. Yeah. Um, well, she was on a houseboat out by the river and she was inside. She was walking out the door and turning, like walking out of a like doorway and turning left. And mid yawn, <laughs> decides to walk this. outside and turn while her mouth is wide open. She completely swallows a dragonfly. A dragonfly? Went straight into her mouth and down her throat. She said she threw up and everything and like it gagged that her sucker, and she yeah, never found fast. it. Never found it. Like it just like she huh. she ate it. Yeah. I hate this. With, Why are we she, talking about this? G- g- <laughs> it's Christmas, insects. Ashley. I'm so sorry. It's Christmas. It was so good though. You are the Grinch. <laughs> Dear God, I'm so itchy. 
So we talk about it all the time on this podcast, but we are firm believers in finding things that are specific to you and your needs. And when it comes to hair care, there's no one size fits all solution. You know, a product that works wonder for curls would make my straight hair look super limp and greasy. And that is why we are so pumped to be partnering with pros because they do personalized routines for your hair. And honestly, it will make you fall in love with your hair. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personal using natural ingredients with proven results. Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. First, Pros starts by asking about you as a person with their in-depth consultation. Pros asked me really unexpected things, like for me, when they were asking about what I eat, what type of exercise I do, I like never would have made the connection that that would affect my hair, but I feel like I was like so educated during this process. Next, Pros analyze all my answers and determine what unique blend of ingredients should be in every product of my custom routine. The main product I have been obsessed with is their customized hair oil. I feel like it makes my hair so shiny and I use it sometimes before wash or even I'll use it as a way to style my hair to just give it that shine throughout the day. And what is so cool is we love companies that are confident about their products like Pros because if you're not 100% positive it's the best hair care you've had, they will take the products back no questions asked. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com com slash advice. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash advice for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. So one thing that many of you know about me, but I am so competitive. Anytime there's a prize involved, I just become obsessed and I have to have it. And if you're like me and just dream of having the chance to win awesome prizes, like, um, I don't know, winning a Tesla, going to space with Virgin Galactic, then you have to check out Omaze, which is the new way to give back to charity and have fun doing it. Here's how Omaze works. You enter for the chance to win something amazing. And at the same time, you can donate to support Support great causes. It's a fun and easy way for nonprofits to raise money and for you to win big prizes. Like, um, you know, a multi-million dollar house in Miami, which by the way, caught my eye immediately. Like, I cannot tell you the luxury. I'm I'm like dreaming of it right now. Here's how it works. Go to omaze.com slash advice and select the Miami Dream House or a different experience of your choosing. Once you've selected your prize, choose a donation amount from $10 to $150. The more you donate, the more entries you'll get. Through your donations, Omaze has raised over $150 million to support over 350 nonprofits around the world. Omaze was named in Fast Company's 2020 Most Innovative Companies and featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, and Stephen Colbert. Everyone deserves a chance to live their dreams, and with Omaze, extraordinary prizes are within reach for everyone. Enter today for your chance to win the Miami Dream House or other life-changing prizes and experiences at omaze.com slash advice. Plus receive 20 extra entries when you enter code advice 20. That's omaze, O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash advice. I'm going to go first and try to turn this around. Yeah, let's turn it. Let's make turn it, let's make it a, a Christmas it special. <laughs> Actually, mine's not very Christmassy, but you know. Well, don't blame it, it is on it me is. then. Okay, but it's not bugs in your ears. Okay, well, it's still and not Christmas. flies in it's your still, throat. At least it's interesting. Gross. Okay. My story is called, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> when I said I wanted to be the main character, I did not mean to be in a love triangle. <laughs> oh my God. You know what? Careful what you ask for. Because <laughs> main characters are often in love triangles. Love triangles. I want to be the side character. <laughs> Just quietly I love. Be, I want to be the the B girl. I want to be like the girl who's married and like gives advice to the main character who's going through the her one drama. Who's who's been around, who lived life, and has some wisdom. I want to cross over. Yeah, I'd like to cross over. Yeah. Okay, God. <laughs> I would like to cross over. Okay. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I admit the title is a bit dramatic, but I couldn't not do it. Mm. I agree. Hi, my name is Kat, and I first off wanted to say how much I adore the podcast. I've been listening for a bit over a year now. Wow. Wow. Dedicated. Wow. Wow. And I have went back 
and, and I went back and listened to all of the episodes. I've learned a lot from you too that I will take with me in the future. Now, cute. Thank you. I, love, I that. love that. Now let's get into the story. I'm a senior in high school and I'm in my first ever relationship and we've been dating for a month now, which in high school is like anything over a month is like, wow. Huge deal in high yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. Did you date in high school? I didn't date a soul in high school. I didn't either. My sister had a four year relationship in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite. Yeah, I didn't Complete date. opposite. Didn't date anyone. My first didn't boyfriend. Didn't have a date to 19? dances. I think I was 19. I was 19 too. So she said, let's call him Josh. I really like Josh, but if I'm honest, back when I was talking to him, I also liked another guy who we'll call Adam. Mm. I like Josh more, and he's the one I went on dates with and talked more outside of school. So when he asked me to be his girlfriend, I said yes. Adam also started dating someone else, so we stayed friends. The problem is I sit next to Adam in one of my classes, and we still talk, quote unquote, as friends. I thought as I got more into a relationship, my feelings for Adam would go away. They have, but they're still slightly there. It doesn't help that Adam is a natural flirter. Even though we're both dating someone, he still gets very touchy, gets in my personal space, and sometimes makes pretty obscure jokes. If we weren't both dating someone, dating people, I'd consider it flirting. Okay. <laughs> it's still flirting. It's flirting. Flirting is flirting, people. You can be married and flirt. Mm -hmm. You can be in a love triangle and flirt. In a love triangle and flirt. You can be single and flirt. You can flirt with <laughs> every person you come across. Yeah. I have been accused of being a flirt. Mm. I will say I think it is my personality type. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm very just like the second I meet you, I think we're friends and I... I do feel like there's, like, because I did have a lot of guy friends, like, I'm just very, like, what's up, bro? Like, blah, blah, blah. And I, I definitely had friends that were, like, you just are so talkative with my crush. And it makes me upset. And I'd be, like, oh, like, I didn't know. They need to calm down. Yes, but I also <laughs> that's think. that's your crush, then you should uh, step it up. But I also think, like, just out of respect, like, it was helpful for me to be, like, wait, okay, like. I need to be careful the way I'm coming across because I don't want that to be seen as that either, you know? I've never been accused of flirt. I've been uh, accused of uh, being intimidating. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> anything. Because you have exact your shut off face. Where exact opposite. People are like, why is she They're looking like, at me like she, she wants to kill me? Does she like But little me? do you know, she's not even thinking about you. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's fully in her own mind yeah. having a dialogue with someone that's not even in the room. Oh. Like, she's not even thinking about you. Taryn knows. Yep, I know. Okay. It's so, actually my focus face. <laughs> okay, we're done. My, I'm done. My resting I hate you face <laughs> is my concentration face. Okay. Um, she does admit if anyone else saw, they would think they were flirting too. On a side note, he's side hugged me, asked me to visit him at his work, and told me about all his problems with his girlfriend because I guess she cheated on him. <sighs> he Bitches also wants me to pin him in my text messages which I was like, oh my God, is that a thing now? It's That's like, like a favorite and like the top. It's like, yeah, but like, remember like MySpace top eight? Mm -hmm. It was like a big deal if you got to be like on someone's top eight. I wonder if like pinning text messages now is like, is like that a that, thing? Where people are but like, but it's weird because it's not like a shareable pinned. thing. I mean, unless people ask to see. It's not like a public thing. Maybe it's like that though. Weird. I know kids these days <laughs> kids these days i was like oh no there's a new thing i wasn't aware okay even though the only time we talk is either for math homework or to play game pygon is that a thing is gamma gamma pegon <laughs> gamma pegon <laughs> where i'm at now is that i love my boyfriend i still have feelings for someone else I would never date Adam. He's a year younger than me and just immature, but I really don't want to stop flirting or whatever you want to call it. Also keep in mind that I don't have that many close guy friends, so this could be all be perfectly friendly and I wouldn't know. I've tried telling my friends all of this, but I just sound like I'm cheating and I feel like they judge me. Let me know if you would consider this cheating, flirting-wise or emotionally. Should I tell my boyfriend or is there nothing to tell? Thanks for reading. 
and discuss. <laughs> My knee popped. I love this one because I'm this like, I genuinely feel like I could be like, no, no, no. Here's what you got to do. You know what I mean? Where some of them, it's like, there are such deep topics that I'm afraid to necessarily yeah, 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 like yeah. totally state my opinion. But this one, I'm like, I I see myself in this oh, in like well, high school. I think, I think everyone's been there where yeah. you you like you are with someone, but there's someone who is like super fun to be around. Yeah. That's also like you flirt with, they flirt mm-hmm. with, and it's this. Well, it's not necessarily in my head like the flirting specifically. It's the you don't want to stop flirting. Yeah. The fact that you actually took the time to write that in this email that you don't want to stop flirting and is a big deal. What else? You like Adam. We always say, if you can't tell your friends about it, uh-huh. you probably shouldn't be doing it. Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. friends are like, friends are friends and they'll speak up and tell you when you're doing something stupid, Yeah, but they're not going to like disown you. And if anything, I think... When you are, when you're not going to all people to get their opinions, but you're yeah. only going to people like you want to hear, mm-hmm. then I think it's just a little like, just like the person on your shoulder, just being like, okay, you know what you're doing, like yeah. just like own it, like yeah. be who you are, whatever. So that was something that stuck out to me too. Uh-huh. So and I like your path you're going, Ash. Also, okay, I have two completely. They sound totally opposite. Uh vibes of advice I guess I would say one part of me being the old and wise mature in my 30s that I am is like don't take anything serious in high school like just have fun because I see so much of like all the drama that was focused on like guys that my friends went through Mm -hmm. that like None of them ended up staying with the same guy. They all like went off and did things. They all like missed out on like fun high school experiences because they were involved in like drama with their boyfriends. So part of me is like, don't take all of this seriously. Just have fun, whatever. Right. Yeah. But then this other part of me comes in because I do think we form habits without even being aware that we're forming habits. Right. And I think you are in some dangerous zone because every time you look at a situation where someone's cheated, there always is those tiny moments in the beginning that were like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like, yeah, so what? We DM every once in a while. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not that big of a deal. Yeah, we text about homework or like whatever. And then it just evolves and evolves and evolves till something big happens and then you're like I don't know how I got here but it's like no you do like you've been slowly making these decisions to get to this big point and so I think that there is this very dangerous zone that you're in that I feel like you should just be aware like okay like the fact that like I obviously know it's wrong or I wouldn't be writing in about this I obviously know it's wrong because I wouldn't be like not telling my friends and I wouldn't be like calling it flirting or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Flirting. It was quote flirting or whatever. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, deep down, I mean, it's always like the golden rule, right? Like you treat people how you want to be treated. If you, if you knew that your boyfriend was doing all of the exact same things that you're doing, would you be like, ah, it's not that big of a deal or would you be hurt by it? And if the answer is I'd be hurt by it, that's kind of like your answer right there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, um, I agree with Taryn. I want you to have fun and enjoy high school. But for me, if you are calling someone your boyfriend, then you shouldn't be talking it's a without commitment. him. commitment. Yeah. yeah. If, like, if you guys were just talking or it was just, it wasn't like a, a promise or a committed thing, um, sure, do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You don't belong to anyone. No one belongs to you. You can, fair game. Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever I know, there's a quote, but I can't think of it. <laughs> All is fair in love and war. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if you, if you, which you are calling someone boyfriend, mm-hmm. then there is a line that has been drawn. And if you are feeling some type of way with Adam, which you clearly are, you shouldn't be. And I think that's it. I think honestly, that's a you sign. You have to friend zone Adam. That's just how it has to. It's yeah, gotta be because done. it's out of respect for relationships and. I'm not saying like, oh, you can't be friends with someone of the opposite sex. I personally lean towards that. Like when I'm in a committed relationship, I don't pursue friendships with men. Like it's just the choice that I've made. But 
it's not just a guy. Like, it's a guy that you straight up say you have say, feelings that you, for. That you, quote, don't want to stop flirting with. And That's you'll continue because it's forbidden. You it's can't fun. have a boyfriend, but not be able to stop flirting yeah. with another guy. It just doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. you gotta pick one. Yeah. So, for me, the Sorry. problem is that you don't want to stop flirting with yeah. Adam and you have a boyfriend. So, and you're being secretive about yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's it's not the flirting Which, and it's not the bo- it's like both. You we can't. are not throwing judgment at all. Not at both all. Both of us have been in similar situations, but I just think I just think like I said, I think this is a slippery area to be mm-hmm. in. And this is also like setting you're in high school. This is setting the bar yeah. a little bit for what dating looks like. Also, you said you don't have a lot of guy friends. And you're not sure if this is like guy friendy. Like I think it's it's very important that you you set those boundaries for guy friends and what you can and can't do with a boyfriend now. Otherwise it's gonna be blurry yes. later on in life. And let me just throw another point. Throw <coughs> go ahead, Taryn. Throw another voice. Yeah, My voice is like cracking a lot. What's wrong um, with you? <laughs> I don't know. Um She's a smoker. <laughs> I, imagine. I'm s i am hate smoke. I have two pet peeves. When people cut in front of me and when people blow their nasty, long filled smoke air mm-hmm. into my mouth mm-hmm. when I did not ask for it. Specifically at the airport when you're like oh my exhausted gosh. and tired already. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so my last point. I think sometimes we get very when we're doing something that we maybe are like, ah, is this right or is it not? We get very involved in the minuscule details to try to justify. Yeah. When in reality, because you made threw up that question that you just brought up, which I forgot about how she was like, I've never had guy friends. I don't know if this is normal. The thing is, it doesn't matter if he is actually flirting with you or not. You are getting emotionally fulfilled from the way he's acting and just your interactions with him. So right there, that just puts it at a different level. And you need to figure out why am I feeling the need to get this fulfillment from him? Is it that I really don't have a good connection with my boyfriend or is it just there's this history and then you might need to just cut that and take a step away so you can like fully get over that. But either way, I think you got some thinking to do and it's okay. We've all been there where we've done something and we have to just sit back at the end of the day and be like, this is on you, bro. Yeah. This is on me. Like it's it's it is what it is. And we've all been there. We've all been there. But again, congratulations for, you know, having the problem of having to choose between yeah. two what guys. What a problem. What a life. You know, I'm choosing between like George and Henry on Bumble who are discussing. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> They're not actually there. I'm just encompassing George everyone and into Henry. that. Um anyways, so oh, yeah. Shoot. That's my that's my that story for today. Yeah, that good luck, good. girl. Love you a got good this. Love a good love triangle. You got this. Keep us updated. Yeah, the drama, the drama. We live for it. Yep. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to handling personal finances, I get so stressed and overwhelmed and literally feel like I, you know, speak another language and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And Credit Karma is here to help you make those big calls with more confidence. Whether you're refinancing credit card debt or paying for an upcoming expense, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you fresh personal loan offers that are personalized to you. On Credit Karma, you can check out multiple loan offers side by side and members who compare loan offers on Credit Karma save an average of 30% on interest rates. My favorite thing is right off the bat, it's completely free and easy to sign up for Credit Karma with no effect on your credit score, which is something that used to make me so nervous. But Credit Karma makes it so simple to search for the right personal loan for you. So are you ready to apply? If you are, head to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to see personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to find the loan for you. That's creditkarma.com slash loan offers. Y'all, when I tell you I get lost when it has anything to do with money, I am not over-exaggerating. And a lot of investment apps make it easy to start trading, but just because it's easy to do, doesn't mean you actually know what you're doing. That's what makes Wealthfront so different. They make it easy to invest and they make it easy to get smart about investing. You know, it's that whole like, do you give someone a fish or teach them how to fish? Like they teach you how to fish. All you have to do is just answer a couple of questions 
funds, and they will build you a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds in minutes. You can also build your own portfolio with clean energy funds, crypto trusts, tech, and hundreds of other investments. Wealthfront even offers a socially responsible portfolio, a mix of funds built around human rights, climate change, sustainability, and diversity. Best of all, Wealthfront is totally automated. They do all the trading, all the rebalancing, and they even help lower your tax bill while you invest. And if it's not enough for me to tell you that I trust Wealthfront, well, Wealthfront has helped nearly half a million people build their wealth and is trusted with over $27 billion in assets. I mean, come on. What more do you need? To start building your wealth and get your first 5,000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash advice. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash advice to start building your wealth. That's wealthfront.com slash advice and get started today. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person that goes into a store and gets super overwhelmed when there's too many choices because I'm always thinking like, how do you know what's the best? How do I know if I'm gonna like it or not? And that is why I love First Leaf Wine Club because they do all the hard work for you. There's no guesswork to discover great wines that you'll love. First Leaf winemakers sample 10,000 wines a year across five continents and 12 countries and select only the best bottles for the club. They believe that it's personal and the more wines you rate, the more they get to know you and personalize each shipment for your taste. They create your own custom wine print, get it? Like fingerprint for each member and maps their vast portfolio of wines to each person's unique taste preferences once you take their five-minute quiz. And guys, I love taking this quiz. It was so easy and like fun. (laughs) And I feel like I got to know so much about wine just within five minutes. Also, there are no contracts or cancellation fees. If you're not happy with the wine you received, First Leaf will give you a credit towards your next shipment for a risk-free way to explore an endless array of world-class wines. Also, the wines that you get, like you've never heard of them. Like I can't even pronounce the wines that I've seen, but I do know I like the taste. Celebrate your special first and the moments that count with First Leaf, the wine club designed to help you discover new wines you'll love, personalized to your taste and delivered to your door. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 with free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash advice. That's tryfirstleaf.com dot com slash advice for six bottles of wine for $29.95 with free shipping. Here's a toast to first. May you enjoy them with the people you love from the first sip to the last. Try firstleaf.com slash advice. <laughs> um, okay, uh, going on to my story. This one is titled Sabotage Snooping. Snooping? Are you a snooper? I'm not a snooper. I'm an accidental snooper. I I think in my head, if I don't have like evidence of anything, why would I look? But then also in my head, if I don't actually see it, it's not real. <laughs> oh, so you're like the avoidance, like yeah, ignorance is absolutely. bliss. Absolutely. Yeah. Unless I am like, you know, unless there's like hard evidence for something. I think I'm just naturally like someone will be talking. And I'm like, oh, who said that? But I, it's not because I'm like, I'm just like nosy. Or like if someone's sitting next to me, I'll catch myself looking at their phone and then I'm like, they probably don't want you to do that, Taryn. Like, look away. <laughs> but it's not that I'm like intentionally. It's like I just do it and then I'm like, oh, Taryn, boundaries. Yeah, you know? Boundaries, Taryn. Okay. Sabotage snooping. Hey, Taryn and Ashley, I've gotten myself into a bit of a bind and I knew right away I wanted to ask you ladies for Love help. It. I feel like a detective. This is fun. I've been seeing a guy for the past two months. We are not, quote, official yet because he wants me to meet his parents first, which is going to be happening this coming weekend. Wait, I've never heard of that. Me neither. Meet my parents before we're in a relationship? Yeah. Parents must have a big say. Oh, okay. Okay. I could see that. I'm assuming. Yeah. And like, they approve or they don't approve. Interesting. Kind of situation. My, My boyfriend asked my dad's permission to ask me to be his girlfriend. That's adorable. It was really cute. I've never had anyone ask my dad anything. He did it in a really cute way. It's very cute. He still sucks, but it was cute. (laughs) Now, the issue. I'll stay the night at his place, and he'll let me sleep in when he goes to work. So that means I'm at his place, alone. And naturally, very curious. A month ago, I snooped. I found a keychain with a girl's name on it in his nightstand. 
Additional backstory here, when we first started talking, he told me that the girl was a friend who was supposed to be a date for a wedding in September, but she ended up bailing at the last minute. This wedding came up in conversation a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him if he had heard from the girl since she bailed. Keep in mind, I had already found the keychain at this point. He said no, and I let it go. At this point, I'm thinking that maybe they hooked up before or something, and he forgot that he had that keychain in his drawer. I don't care if they did or not. That's not the issue here. This morning, I went to see if it was still in the drawer, and it wasn't. And then I looked in the second drawer of the nightstand and lo and behold, there it was, that damn keychain. So our boy moved the keychain from one drawer to another and now I know that he knows that he has it. I'm bothered that he still has it and didn't get rid of it. The story I'm telling myself is that it's a trophy of some kind or that he hasn't fully let her go. I've been burned in the past by a similar situation. January will be three months of being, quote, together. And up until this keychain incident, I've had zero reason to doubt him. (laughs) His phone is always out and available to me and not on do not disturb mode. He's incredibly kind and supportive and he's prioritized my happiness. He's a private person in general. And so I feel bad having violated his privacy, but he's also very level-headed and logical, so I think that there could be a civil conversation. I'm trying to figure out, one, is this even something to be upset over? Am I sabotaging an otherwise amazing thing? Two, do I say anything? Can I just take the keychain and chuck it out my car window on the way home and we both never have to speak of it until uh, our deathbeds? And three, If I bring it up, should I tell him that I saw it in both spots or just say that I saw it and see if he's honest? Also, I'm an Enneagram type six and a Virgo. He's a Libra Enneagram unknown. (laughs) I truly (laughs) hope y'all are able to read my issue and give me some advice on how you would handle this. Thank you so much for giving me a great podcast to get lost in each week. Love, Anonymous. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, I I think I've kind of like summarized how I feel about this. Um, so I'm just go gonna go ahead and say it. Um, you are not actually together yet. Hmm. It's only been three months. In my opinion, he doesn't need to tell you anything. Okay. Until there's like a committed anything. Yeah. If I was with someone and I was holding on to something from like an ex's or a past relationship or whatever, I would feel no need to get rid of it until I'm in a committed relationship. Yeah. So I'm giving him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Um, because if if you aren't in a, officially seeing each other, then he's not doing anything wrong by holding on yeah. to it. Um, and we don't even know exactly what happened with the keychain. Yeah. So why blow it out of pro- proportion and ruin something that could be really, really good over this tiny keychain when you technically he's not even your boyfriend yet? Yeah, I definitely. It was funny because at first I was like, no, this is like not a big deal at all. Like guys aren't like. I don't think guys are like girls where they like go through their house and make sure everything's gone. Like, no, yeah. I don't think that's I'm a thing. I'm not like that. <laughs> I, I am, if it's like a very big dramatic thing. Like when me and my ex broke up, it was like very tragic for me. So right. I was like, I don't want anything in but my house. But that's in the ex of four years. Yes. This guy, this guy possibly hooked up with yes. this girl once. So... First, I was like, he probably doesn't know it's there. Then it got moved. So I'm like, okay, obviously he does know it's there. Um, Now, I'm what I'm hearing is I think she's more phased by like, I've asked him if he still talks to her and he said no. So she's taking that as like, you're saying there's nothing going on, but why would you like? Yeah. But this is my main thing I will say, and I feel like you'll back me up on this. I have heard from multiple sixes that their biggest issue in relationships is that they're constantly testing. So constantly like trying to like almost be ahead of a problem. And then when they see like one tiny sign of something that makes them feel weird, then they start going through all these like imaginary hoops they're putting their person in. 
and they're getting bitter every step of the way if they're not doing what they think they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And when I'm hearing your story, it sounds very like spirally. Yes, that's yes, a very good way I to agree. say. It. Where I I can I can feel within your thing how this is something that consumes you, yeah. and I get it. Like especially when like you get into a place of insecurity, like that is a really hard thing to get out of because everything feels so big. Yeah, but I do agree with Ash. I think I think that until there's like it sounds like he's committed to if he wants you to meet his parents. Mm -hmm. That's a big right? step. Yeah. Um. It could be nothing, but I also think I'm very, I'm a firm believer in if something is hurting you for a long time, you should speak up about it. Yeah. So part of me is like, just go ahead and have the conversation and just be like, hey, I know this is so weird, but like, I was looking in your drawer and I saw the keychain with her name on it and like, I'm just being honest. Like for a second, I started freaking out about it. So instead of me being like all paranoid in my head, I just wanted to talk to you about it. And just like bring it up super like nonchalant. But if you don't want to do that, then I think you need to move on and stop trying to make him prove if he deserves your trust and just trust him till he proves that he doesn't. Okay. Yes. I think that's solid advice. Mm -hmm. I personally, I don't know why, emotionally, I feel like I relate a lot to men. If anyone snooped through my drawers before a committed relationship, I'd have a problem with that. Yeah, I would personally be offended and I immediately I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even go to like, why are you feeling this way? Or, oh, I'm so sorry. This has been bothering be you. Yeah. I'd be like, leave. I'd be but annoyed. She has to. She can't bring it up without admitting that what she yeah. did. So you've kind of put yourself in a situation. So where you're I'm stuck. saying be very careful yeah. because you honestly, even though you guys are progressing in your relationship, it's almost been three months yeah, it's still not an actual relationship yet, and that would that would bother me. Yeah, a lot. Oh, the fact that I would never say out loud to him, and this is just me personally, is I saw that it moved from one drawer to the other. That's, that is next level. Like, that is next level, and and that would in the even kindest I would be way, by in that. the kindest way, and I this is I'm saying this lovingly. It is showing that you're spiraling. Yeah, and that is a lot to show someone who's not in a committed relationship <laughs> with yeah. you, who still has that like, do I want to? Do I yeah. don't? You know, and I don't. I don't want you to hide who you are from this person. But I, I just, I do think that if you tell him, you would have to figure out like a very rational way to say that. Hey, I was snooping here's what I found and yeah. I have, is this controlling my life? And am I thinking about it 24 seven? Yes. That's, that's what it seems like since you've checked it twice. Well, too, like I've had friends that were in a relationship, had this gut feeling, they snooped and confirmed that they were being cheated on. Right. So they bring that up and the guy tries to be like, you were snooping through my stuff. And it's like, nope, you don't have an argument because you're cheating on me. Right. And that's but also this is, like, this is different because this it's is like, different. Oh, you're holding on to something like maybe it's not like you've been yeah. you've you've been noticing, you know, it's not like you've been dating for a while and he's been texting while you're there or mm -hmm. he's been like ho getting home late or like all the stereotypical red yeah, flags, like all of those I feel like lead up to a snooping situation and that's valid. But like this, in my opinion, isn't valid. Yeah. So be careful how you tell him because it's, in my opinion, an invasion of privacy. I also think you need to look deeper into why you are feeling so insecure. Yes. And if your reasoning has nothing to do with stuff he's actually done to you, then that's a you pro like that's a you thing. You've yeah. got to like get you in need check. to separate what he's done yeah. and what you're struggling because with. Because if he's if he hasn't done anything to make you think you can't trust him, that's not fair to keep putting him through these like little hoops. Yeah. But it's up to you. And the thing is, is like. I don't believe in going into relationships, hiding all of the bad things about no. yourself, hoping you can trick them long enough to get them. So if if you are the type of person that is paranoid and this is going to be happening, then I think he should see a glimpse of it. If yeah. that's like what it's going to be. Let him know be. what it's like. Like, I know I'm a very emotional person and I have to talk about stuff. So mm -hmm. I do like very early on with my relationships and for me, that's how I get close to people so fast. But if someone were to be like, I'm not into that, I'd rather them know at the beginning. So I'm just saying, like, if it if it does get to a point where you're tortured 24-7, I, 
I mean, he deserves to see that that's the type of person you are. But also, I think you need to like restructure and figure out like where is this coming from exactly yeah and Taryn was spot on with the whole like six thing um something you do and it's a survival technique is try to find anything dangerous that could harm you yeah and like blow it out of proportion and think of different possible scenarios that could happen from this one situation and I think what you've done is you found a little thing blown it out of proportion and assumed that there he's cheating on you or he's still it's on into this person but we need to yeah you know we need to recognize that this is something that we struggle with reel it back in and remind ourselves yeah. this is a keychain to a guy who you are technically not in a relationship with yeah so restructure <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> like when you first said trophies, I'm like, okay, trophy is a scary word. If yeah. it was like naked Polaroids of women who you're like, are they conscious or not? Then <laughs> right. But it's a yeah. keychain. <laughs> you don't know. The dramatic <laughs> That's where my mind goes. It's right? literally a keychain. And she could have left it there and maybe he's maybe she is a friend and nothing happened and he's gonna give it back to mm-hmm. her. Or maybe they did hook up once and it's hers and he's planning on giving it back to yeah. her, but like he hasn't like seen her at all so that's why he's keeping it but yeah I would I would reel it back in I don't think it's that big of a deal so far he's done nothing to yeah raise suspicion and if you're needing to feel that security then more a more productive way to approach it is would be to like sit him down and just be like hey I just want to know like are you dating other people? Like, are we are we dating other people, or like, are we just dating each other? Then, yes. then you can get your security in that. If that's that's what I'm saying, like, you have to go down to like the what is the bigger problem? Is yes. it that you feel nervous that you don't have him just to yourself? Okay, well then talk about that. Yeah, don't go searching for keychains and trying to and, like prove that he's and talking write this people. whole script in your mm-hmm. head of how he's hurting yeah. you. Um, because I, I agree with Taryn in my head, it sounds like you really like him and you want to be in a relationship yeah. with him, but you're not yet. Yeah. So I agree with Taryn. I think, and you don't even have to have the whole define the relationship thing. You can just yeah. be like, hey, just so you know, I'm not seeing anyone else. And I want you to know that just so you know where I am. Yeah. I'm not expecting a like, you know, let's make this official right now conversation. I just want you to know like that's, that's where I'm at. And you don't have to be there yet, but that's where I am. Yeah. And I feel like he could pro- very possibly, especially since he wants you to meet his parents, be like, yeah. hey, fun fact, me too. Love it. Yeah. So good Love luck with that. It. You got this. <laughs> Re- reel it in, girl. Reel, Just reel it, in. it in a little bit. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we got to save our crazy for when they deserve it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, That's he's, what I if do. he's sneaking around doing doing dirty, awful things, then go full crazy on him. Yeah, I'm but the so poor, easy the poor going. guy. The poor guy is just living life right now. <laughs> yeah, he's not even aware. <laughs> That's no idea. No idea. <laughs> me and every fight me and Ash are in, me just being so sad and tortured for months and her just like, la da <laughs> That's what La-dee-da. I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. No, That's fully. what I mean. I get it, girl. Should we wrap it up? Yes. And in the spirit of Christmas, <clears throat> how can you tell that Santa is real? Santa is real because he eats the cookies that you leave out for him that's a very literal answer (laughs) thank you for playing yeah Um, oh wait what was that thing i was gonna start telling you remember that show you're watching oh uh oh what was it i forgot it it's so funny though oh no i'll try to think of it everyone's like i don't care yeah they're like get on with it because you can always sense his presence oh that is so good (laughs) ho 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 i love that thanks merry christmas everyone no but genuinely we are so thankful for you guys, and oh. we hope you have the best Christmas because you are gifts to us, <laughs> and we love you. And I like genuinely mean full that. Full cheese, full, full cheese. cheese. Um, yeah, we very much appreciate you guys. We are so thankful for you, um, and we will talk to you guys soon next year, baby. Bye. Uh, love no, you. we still have the twenty seventh episode. Bye. Oh. I'll see you next year too, though. So <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>
So one thing that many of you know about me, but I am so competitive. Anytime there's a prize involved, I just become obsessed and I have to have it. And if you're like me and just dream of having the chance to win awesome prizes, like, um, I don't know, winning a Tesla, going to space with Virgin Galactic, then you have to check out Omaze, which is the new way to give back to charity and have fun doing it. Here's how Omaze works. You enter for the chance to win something amazing. And at the same time, you can donate to support great causes. It's a fun and easy way for nonprofits to raise money and for you to win big prizes. Like, um, you know, a multi-million dollar house in Miami, which by the way, caught my eye immediately. Like I cannot tell you the luxury. I'm, I'm like dreaming of it right now. Here's how it works. Go to omaze.com slash advice and select the Miami dream house or a different experience of your choosing. Once you've selected your prize, choose a donation amount from $10 to 150 the more you donate, the more entries you'll get. Everyone deserves a chance to live their dreams. And with Omaze, extraordinary prizes are within reach for everyone. Enter today for your chance to win the Miami Dream House or other life-changing prizes and experiences at omaze.com slash advice. Plus, receive 20 extra entries when you enter code ADVICE20. That's omaze, O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash advice.